need to talk about uh, energy efficiency. We've been exposed to the COP for refrigeration. What's E? Energy efficiency ratio. What is it defined as? The cooling capacity, that's Q dot removed from the low temperature refrigeration, divided by the power input, W dot in. Hey, isn't this Q dot low divided by W dot in? Yeah, they're the same definition. They are, except this one, typically we put watts or watts and they cancel, it's the dimensionless. This one, the ear, they say, no, nah, we're interested in cooling in BTUs per hour, electricity in watts. So they have these funny units. Now they'll report it as a number. Oh, my ear is 10 with no units, but it's implied and you have to know that it's 10 BTU per hour per watt. All right. So the ear has those units, and it's basically if the manufacturer reports it for controlled environment of 35 degrees C outdoor air, and for the inside air, it's 27 C and 50% relative humidity. So it has to work while it's condensing some moisture. Typical room air conditioners have an ear around 10, 9, 9 and a half, 10. Note, write this number down if you don't already have it memorized. One BTU per hour is 0.293 watts. If you ever bought purchased appliances, maybe you've seen these tags. This is an energy guide. The U.S. government, you know, has a form for this tag and encourages or requires manufacturers to put it on their devices to help the consumer make wise purchase decisions. So. This is all about the manufacturer, model number, rating. Over here, oh, it's for a room conditioner with reverse cycle and with louvered sides. Here is a visual of comparative cost, estimated yearly operating cost. If you buy this unit, oh, about $98 compared to if you bought a different unit, it could be down here. So it looks like it's a little bit on the high side. And they give you right here a 9.5 for the ear. Now you can read these labels with more confidence. The air conditioner has an ear of 9.5, just like we showed. What is the COP? Is it 9.5 or is it a different number? Remember this conversion factor and go for it. Professor, I was getting a good nap. So uh, there's a lot of ways to approach it, but you just say that 9.5 BTUs per hour divided by watt, that's what was given. That's our ear, right? EER is equal to that. And if I multiply this by, hey, well, one BTU per hour is equivalent to 0.293 watts, then I just multiplied by a unit conversion factor and BTUs per hour, watts, watts, or, or you can think of this as 9.5 times 0.293 is watts per watts, which is COP, right? So when we do that, um, we find that it's around 2.8. Makes sense? Once you show it to me, Professor, it makes sense. Why don't you show me how to do that before you ask me the question? All right. Now, once you have ear down, you find down that ear is really used for room air conditioners, window units. But for the split system for your apartment or house, they use the SEER, seasonal energy efficiency ratio. All they do is they have now on temperature conditions for that, loca not location, for United States, I think. I don't think it's per state where they vary it, but it's for seasonal temperature variations, not for a fixed condition. Now, they're very close in numeric value, the ear and the sear, but they're slightly different in definition because it's seasonal. So again, the room air conditioner, ear is what's quoted. Split system, homes, apartments, sear is reported. Typically, the ear is here, the sear is much higher. All right, so the sear has units of, are those familiar? They're the same units. They're the same exact units. So. Uh, here is one showing a 13.3 sear. Now, the world continues to change. 
Back in 06, there were some big changes where they said, if you're going to sell anything in the United States, you must have at least a 13 seer. And I kind of remember when that kicked in. People in December of 05 were selling a bunch of units. Hey, cheaper. Price is going up. We have to have a higher efficiency. I remember when my dad bought a, a brand new unit for the house we were living in when I was a kid, and he paid extra to get a 10 seer high efficiency unit. Really good. Today you can't even get a 10 seer. It's so poor, right? It's so poor in efficiency. Anyway, over the years, in 2015, they bumped it up such that the southeastern region of the United States must sell only 14 seer or better. And the world continues to change. So what's southeastern region? Alabama, Arkansas, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii. Hey, let's show this graphically. Here. 14 seer if you live in there. They, they legally cannot sell and install something less than 14 seer. Now, if you live up here, come on. How much air conditioning do you really need in, winter, in the summer? You're nine months of winter. All right. So you can still do 13 seer. Then something about special over here. So the world changes in these requirements. So if the air conditioner has 14 seer, what is the coefficient of performance? Well... You take the 14, multiply by, you've done this before, about 4.1. That's the COP. All right. You should be able to do this. I wish I had more time, but uh, this is the type of question you got. Somebody will say, hey, uh, you studied all this. Oh, yeah, SEER. Oh, yeah, I learned all about SEER. I have a 13 SEER system, and uh, some it needs to be replaced. Somebody wants to sell me an 18 seer system. If I go with the 18 seer system, the higher efficiency, how much money am I going to save on my electric bill? That's not a trivial question to answer, but you have all the tools and should be able to answer it with a number of assumptions. A couple things is, and this is a friend of mine told me this one. He said, well, it's hard to predict because look at when you get a new car, what do you like to do with your new car? You like to drive it. You go on road trips. You show it off. You don't drive the same miles. Guess what your fuel bill does for your new car? It goes up because you're driving it more. You get a new home air conditioning system. And you kind of been laying in bed at night sweating a little bit while you try to go to sleep. What do you do to the thermostat of that new home air conditioning system? You drop that baby down. Hey, we're living in a refrigerator now. And guess what? You, you, now you can't compare apples and apples, oranges and oranges. You just started doing all kinds of different things. So what you have to do is you have to assume that one summer, last summer, is about the same as hot as next summer. Have you ever seen a summer where it really is kind of mild? Well, your electric bill is kind of mild too that summer. And then one summer it's brutal. And then there's, uh, you're paying whopper bills. The next thing is, is you basically have the same house and your same setting on your temperature so that your, your cooling need for the house is about the same as the cooling need for the house. You know, it, it's related to the temperature outside, but it's also related to the thermostat setting inside. And maybe you don't go on vacation for a month or whatever. So... So here it is. So if somebody said, this is how I calculate the cost to purchase the electricity in one year to cool only for the mountain electricity, not to do the uh, laundry, not to run the pool pump, not the electricity to run the TV and, and different things. It's just to provide cooling, air conditioning. You would say, how much cooling do I need for the whole year? What is the rate of electric consumption per cooling needed and then what is my cost per the amount of electricity that I need okay so basically this is my one over the sear that's what they're telling me here right here the cooling uh, per electric cost okay that ratios this the uh, here when you invert this that's the sear okay or just do the inverse of this year. All right. Now, the second year, the same thing. We want the same amount of cooling. That's going to be an assumption. The amount of electricity 
uh, cost, electricity doesn't change. All you're changing is the efficiency of the system. So what you do is you say, well, the cost from the new year, the next year, will be the cost from the previous year, $3,000, times the ratio of the old SEER divided by the new SEER, it should cost there. There's an estimate. So what's my savings? I'm going to save, what, $830. It was $3,000. Now it's $830. How much more did I pay? You can do a simple payback. Let's say you paid uh, $2,500 extra to go from the 13 SEER to the 18 SEER. How many years? You know, simple payback. You take, take that total amount. You save $830 per year, one over a year. And so the time for payback would be whatever that is. What's that, about four, three what is 25, 8.3, uh, three years, three year payback. Simple payback, right? So believe me, this is the type of calculation people want to see. And you're equipped to do it. You're equipped now to do it. All right, so we covered a lot of material here. Hopefully the ear and the seer you're now familiar with. Let's continue on.